welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to answer this question. What are the presence constraints in SSIS and where and why have you used them? So presence constraints are the links between the tasks. They have different states and depending on those states we can run the next task in the flow. So let's go to the SSDT or bids and take a look what exactly they are. So suppose that I have a data flow task right here and then uh, on completion or success uh, or on failure uh, I want to run some other task. Let's bring another task we call it execute SQL task that can be used to run uh, SQL statements, uh, store procedures uh, and uh, other uh, um, functions and you can also get the data from different uh, uh, tables or uh, um, views and uh, uh, save that data into the variables. So what, what we want to do here if uh, data flow task completes then this task will run because they are connected by default with the green arrow the green arrow means the success double click on that green arrow and you will see presence constraint editor and the value of this one is success and the evaluation operator right now is set to the constraint so it is a constraint on and on a success the next task will run so let me go back and delete and bring the next data flow task and uh, wh why I deleted that I don't want to configure the um, the connection managers and write queries and all those kind of things for the execute SQL task I just want to put uh, an empty data flow so we, we can see that uh, um, data flow doesn't need the source and the transformation to run we can put uh, empty data flows and still run, can run so if uh, I run the whole package right now if first will will be if first will be successful then the next one will run so let's uh, run this one and see what happened so we can see that the both ran successfully because the first ran successfully and uh, we have the presence constraint that say okay if the first run successful go to the next one now what we have here let's uh, double click again and put uh, on failure so what's going to happen if uh, this fails uh, then you should be running the second one so right now this is going to be success uh, as uh, we don't have anything here and uh, it should be successful that's why uh, this is not going to run let's uh, start our SSIS package and as you can see that the first one is successful so the second one did not run let me go back and uh, let's fail it uh, by purpose so let's put uh, only DB source here and leave this one as it is. We are not making any connection so it is failure and uh, when we run it, it should fail. So right now it is saying uh, no, uh, you, you have to configure this one. Uh, you cannot, uh, uh, it, it fail on validation so we can't really move forward. So if we wanna really fail it, we have to do something. Let me go here, write a query, say select constant by zero that's infinity as ID. And now we go to the column, it brings the value, and let's write this value to the multicast. And now what we are gonna go, we are gonna run the package and see if the first task fail. So as we can see that the first task failed because we have the statement select to a constant divided by zero that's infinity and that can, can't really return us anything. So that's why the first one failed and we had this uh, presence constraint on certain failure so that the second one ran. Let's go to the last one and what we have here this is called completion. So now you have completion doesn't matter the first one fail or successful. Uh, the second one is going to run anyways so right now you can see that the first fail it ran let's close this let's go back here in the first one and delete these uh, now the first one should complete uh, successful and the, the second one uh, will run and as we can see that the both ran successfully because the condition here is a completion so first one is completed doesn't matter it's successful or failure 
so that's how it work the last point what we want to talk about that right now we only use the constraint that's where we have f uh, success failure and completion now we can use expressions as well we can write a, maybe a record count is equal to or greater than 100 or something like that so we can write any expressions we can use the constraint and expressions together so in that case the constraint and the expression has to be evaluated true to run and go to the next uh, uh, task and uh, the last one we have is expression or constraint that means one of them has to be successful to go to the next uh, task so that's how the presence constraint work and i have a demo uh, how to write the expressions um, if you can uh, take a look i will put the link though in the description and if uh, even not you will find that there are so many examples i have done in different videos how to use the presence constraint and how to redirect uh, to the different tasks depending on the conditions uh, let's let's go back and just remove this part as we know that uh, now we have removed the link between uh, two tasks so there is no presence constraint right here so they are going to run in parallel the, the both tasks will be running in parallel and uh, um, if you want to run them on depending on the condition of first like success failure or completion you have to connect them so this uh, connection or the link between uh, two of them or uh, more of them that's that's the president's constraint so that that's the link uh, you will be creating from one task to another task thanks very much for watching this video and i will see you in next video